All right, so after the last few videos went a little long, this one should be a bit shorter. Uh, hi guys, we took our quiz. We're more than halfway through now. There's really only two things left to do. We are going to be solving problems using the mid-segment theorem today. Um, and then we're gonna do points of concurrency for the remainder of the week, honestly. And, and that is that in, in unit four. We'll have a test sometime next week. Uh, we'll review before that, but uh, yeah, it's pretty good. So we're gonna be using, learning the mid-segment theorem and using it to find lengths, all right? And that is again, the bottom of, towards the bottom of level two. Don't forget about isosceles equilateral, triangle angle sum theorems, hinge theorem, triangle inequality theorem exterior angle theorem. Don't, don't forget about all of those theorems and their extensions and their converses because they're all going to be on the test at the end of unit four. They'll all be on the EOC, uh, but hopefully doing like one at a time has, has been helpful with you guys in, in learning them and remembering them, all the different rules. None of them super hard, but just, you know, uh, there's a lot of rules. So mid-segments to find lengths. So here we go. This is the picture of a mid-segment of a triangle. It is a segment that connects the midpoints of the two sides. So see how in this one, I got a color code, of course. Um, we have a triangle with three sides. You can see that. Uh, and there's dots in the middle of three of those sides. So we have um, the left-hand side has those congruent marks, those two ticks, meaning that that point bisects the left-hand side. All right. And that point there would be the midpoint. Um, over on the right hand side, they're congruent sides as well, different than the ones on the left. It's a different side, it's a different side length, but it is also cut in half by that dot. So that dot bisects that segment. It is a midpoint. All right. And the mid segment is the line in the middle, it's the line that is connecting the two midpoints. That is what a mid segment is. So if you have a triangle, and you cut the sides in half, you draw a line through those points, that's, that's what your mid-segment is, all right? So that's a mid-segment. It has two very important properties. So if a segment joins the midpoints of the two sides of a triangle together, then the mid-segment is parallel to the third side, and it is half the length. So if you're checking this out, right, you've got, again, your, oh, I gotta write on this, your first side split in half, your second side split in half. You have a midpoint here and here with a mid segment through it, right? That's telling you that that side in purple and the side below it in purple, they are parallel by definition of the triangle mid segment theorem. Uh, they're parallel. That's what the little arrows mean, it means they're parallel. They're also, the top one is half the length of the bottom one. So the smaller one is half the length. So if you're checking this out on the right hand side, you can see that, right? And you guys are going to show that in your practice that uh, if this side has a length of five, then the mid segment will have a length that is half of that. It's going to be two and a half. Conversely, right? If the mid segment has a length of eight, then the bottom part over here is going to be double that to be 16. All right. So that's all well and good. You also have all of the uh, parallel lines intersected by a transversal rules that would apply. Right. Um, so they're telling you in the bottom here, if I just clear all this, change to red to look at angles, measure of angle CDE. So that's CDE would be this corner here is equal to the measure of angle CAB. That is CAB down there. Uh, because if you have two parallel lines intersected by a transversal, right? So you have your two parallel lines intersected by a transversal. You know, those two angles, the two angles in red there, they're corresponding angles. So they're congruent, all right? And then um, same for CED and CBA. It's just the other transversal over here. You know that this angle and this angle are congruent. Now you could figure out this angle because of the 180 rule. You could figure this angle out because the 180 rule. You could figure this angle out if you have the other two because of the 180 rule of triangles. Uh, but yeah, um, so that's all the stuff that's going on there. So the angles, very important that you remember your angle theorems, your angle rules. If you remember those from chapter three, you should be okay. I just wanted to demonstrate some of the new stuff about the side lengths and such. So I want to go to page 18 with you guys real quick. And we're going to look at number six. That is the bottom of page 18. It's part of your practice. You're just going to write it, type it in. You're good. Uh, points 
E, D, and H are the midpoints of the sides of T, U, V. All right, so D, E, and H are both cutting those parts in half. So if you wanted to, right, since they said D, uh, E first, I might mark that with my little uh, congruent signs. And then they said D, so I'll mark that with my second congruent signs. And then they said H, so I can mark those with my third congruent signs. All right, so we know that those are all good. Those are all there. Uh, they told you that U, V, which is this bottom length right here. So I'll put it in blue. This bottom length is 80, right? So if that's 80, what are each of the tiny parts, right? U, D, and D, V. If the whole thing is 80, that means that this portion needs to be 40 and this portion needs to be 40 so that because they're cut in half because the mid segment. All right, so, so that's good there. All right, so that's cool. They told us that TV is 100. So TV is the purple side here. If I can write TV here is 100. So if H cuts it in half, right, that means that we've got a 50-50 situation going on right here. All right, boom. And then they said that HD is 80. Now, HD is here, right? It is HD. It is, it is that one right there, 80 degrees. Uh, sorry, not 80 degrees. It's 80 units long, right? So they want us to find the perimeter of triangle HED. That is the tiny one. I'm just going to find all the side lengths, all right? That's it. So I want to first point, draw your attention to HD, which is the odd man out. They gave us the big N, the big N, and then HD was the small one, right? So HD is, we know that H and D are both midpoints. And so that makes HD a mid segment. We know that the mid segment is parallel to the opposite side. So that means that this is also uh, this and in my 80 degree, my HD and my TU, they are parallel. Also, now that we've matched them up, I know that HD is half of the length of TU. So that means that if HD is 80, TU should be 160, all right? Which means this part is 80 and this part is 80, all right? And, and then we're good to go on that. Now, as far as how long everything else is, right? We can figure that out pretty quickly. Uh, if we look at my blue side, right? Oh no, that's the eraser. Um, there. If we look at my blue side down here on the bottom, right? That should be parallel with HE. You could see that they're the same. They're going the same direction. They're, they're parallel. They're good. And in addition to being parallel, we know that HE is smaller. It is exactly half the length. So if this guy is 40, 40, 80, right? That means that HE should be 40. So we can write that in. Good to go. Woohoo. And we have one more to fill in. We know the purple side not going to erase it this time. We know the purple side, TV, all together, 50 and 50, that makes 100. Uh, we know that it is parallel to ED right there, the one I just shaded in purple. OK. Um, sorry, going to get rid of that. That's a little bit clearer now. Uh, and that means that ED is half the length of TV. So if TV is 100, ED should be half of that. That should be 50. And so now we've plugged in everything. And I wanted to do all of them because depending on which, which problems you're practicing on, right? Depending on whatever practice problem you are working on, on any given moment, this is all the stuff they're going to ask you. They're going to ask you which sides are parallel, which side is what length, uh, all this stuff they could ask you. Uh, so I wanted to give you everything in this example. That's why I picked number six. So we're good to go with that. Now, finally, they want us to find the perimeter of triangle H. E D. Now H E D is here, 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 right? You start at H, you go to E, you go to D. That is your triangle. We want to find the perimeter of that. So perimeter of H E D is what? Right? Well, the perimeter is just you adding up all of the side lengths, right? We knew that from way back earlier. Um, it just usually takes too long when we're doing coordinate geometry to do that, but we can do it here. Um, so if you add, want the perimeter of HED, just add up those three sides. So you're going to add up my 40, 
plus 50 plus the 80, right? And that is it. So 40 plus 50 plus 80, that's eight. Uh, 80 plus 90, so that should be 170, I believe. 170, uh, they didn't give us centimeters, feet, yards, or, or we would tell them that. Uh, so it's just 170, um, 170 units technically, um, but that, that is it. So again, the point of this one was not to get, I mean, it was to find the perimeter, but it was to go over absolutely everything you would need for all the problems. If they want you to identify the parallel sides, you should be able to do so because I did it when I was solving this. If they want you to find lengths. I found literally every length of this triangle so and color coded them with what they match with. So hopefully you are good on that as well. Um, if it's more helpful, right, you can leave the big total lengths, right? So instead of me doing like 50-50 on the left-hand side, if you'd rather, you can leave this label as just 100 and put it out there. But I thought 50-50 was more helpful because we do have that point H in the middle. It was cut in half. So in case they ask you for TH, or HV, we know that they're 50-50. They ask you for TV, it's pretty easy to add that up to get 100, so just uh, that, that's really it. So you guys, for practice today, are gonna do all the other problems on pages 17, 18, and 19. So there's seven of them. Six of them are pretty quick and painless. The seventh one, I really like. The seventh one calls on you to use all of your prior knowledge. You gotta find mid-segments, you've gotta find distance, You've got to find slope. It is a great review problem. It really, really is. And so I hope that you take the time to check that one out. Uh, that is the only page that you need pictures to show your work for is page 19. The other ones are all pretty quick. You'll label what you need to label. You'll do the rest in your head. Uh, so that's, that's just fine. But you need a picture to prove to me that you did page 19. Um, and, and for that one, you may need some of these flashy formulas, right? You might need the mid-segment. I'm sorry, not mid-segment, but you might need a midpoint formula here or there, right? It is um, x1 plus x2 over 2, comma, y1 plus y2 over 2. That's how you find the midpoint between two points. Um, your slope formula, of course, is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And then finally, your distance formula, right, is the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. That's all you should need in order to do number seven um, in various different spots. Um, on class kick, I think I will have these written out on there so you can use them there as well. Uh, but you will have to, when they want you to find the midpoints, coordinate wise, you're going to have to find the midpoint that way. Plot it, point it, poke it, do your thing. Uh, for slope, uh, not necessarily just for slope, but when they ask you to prove that they're parallel, you will have to find, I guess, not the equations. You'll just have to find the slope. So that, that's, that's perfect. That's fine for that. And then for distance, when they want you to prove that the length of one is half the length of the other, you'll need to use that formula. So just make sure you're good on those. And I think that's all I have for you. So that is mid-segments. Not bad again. None of these theorems have been particularly awful. It's just that there's so many. All right. So don't forget all the ones from last time. Don't forget all of them from before the quiz. Um, and just keep learning the new ones. We're almost there, guys. Uh, we're going to be on page 20 of our packets tomorrow. And we're going to be living there for a good while. All right. So have a good one, guys. Bye.